Goku Sun DBZ here, and welcome back for a new top five criminally underrated list. So, with that said, this time we are checking out the Sega Dreamcast. Besides it getting tied for the most votes, I thought that end up choosing also since it's 25th anniversary of the Sega Dreamcast. So, with that said, first we have two honorable mentions. First of which goes to Star Wars Episode 1 Jedi Power Battles. If you never played Jedi Power Battles, I do recommend trying the game out. It's actually quite a bit of fun. And frankly, it deserves more love than it gets. <clears throat> also, the fact that you can co op the game together with a friend of yours. And of course, you can choose from different Jedi Knights. Back in the day, when me and one of my friends would play, usually I always played as Qui-Gon, and he usually pl always pl would play as Master Windu. Definitely have a few very nostalgic fond memories for this game. Frankly, I think from some people it's a little too much hate, but overall, I feel it's a criminally underrated, definitely Star Wars game. That's for sure. Though, to be fair, you can make a criminally underrated list for many different Dreamcast games from throughout the years. Second, the honorable mentions goes to, I think, a criminally underrated RPG experience on the Dreamcast. And that is Time Stalkers. If you've actually never played Time Stalkers, I do recommend checking the game out. It's a superb and great RPG experience. It works more old school, traditional. Still, you have a great selection. I mean, you have over 30 different characters you can use. Which is really cool. It's definitely, I think, an underrated game that deserves more love than it actually got. Skies of Arcadia is arguably an RPG that did end up getting a lot of high praise from throughout the years. It is unfortunate that Time Stalkers does not get the same treatment. It's an, I wouldn't put the same level as Arcadia, but I do definitely think it's an RPG that deserves more love than it gets. And the fact it's never been re-released from the Dreamcast. Number five. Goes to Vigilate the Second Offense. I think superior from the first game. And even though you did have options, you could also, I believe, play this on the N64 and PS1. You were best choosing the Dreamcast version, as I had faster load times and overall better, I would say, better texturing. Overall, the game looked better, I think, as a whole. And just a little bit better quality on the music as well, because of the hardware. And everything, plus you had such a great variety of vehicles you could play with in this game and unlockables. Like, I love the fact that it was up to four players, really cool. And I miss that in most modern games. Plus all the power-ups, plus the interactive environments like the desert stage you play as. You see, if you get close... You'll see an asteroid hit the ground. You go to the asteroid, and if you blow up the asteroid, a giant ant shooting laser beams and stuff will start attacking you. Kind of similar to that of Earth Defense Force games, but really more or less before those games. But yeah, if you're into stuff like vehicular combat games, in my opinion, this is the crowning jewel of vehicular combat. Coming in next at number four, 
one of, in my opinion, one of the best survival horror games of all time. Blue Stinger. It is definitely an acquired taste, and it can have some difficulty because of certain things you have to do. There is a lot of backtracking unless you know a few things here and there about the game. But there are also ways that you can end up becoming OP in the game. But it's definitely not your stereotypical survival horror game of this era. It did many different things to really set itself apart from most other survival horror games of the time period. And that's what I love about it. It has such a unique style about it. Unique flair. The characters. The interactions. There's just a lot of stuff that I really appreciate about Blue Stinger. It has definitely a lot of the classic elements of a good B-rated horror film. Plus I love the fact it actually has a good sense of humor. Even though it's a horror game. It has a lot of slapstick comedy in it. And I appreciate that. I just wish Blue Stinger would get a remaster, re-release. I would love a sequel, but given Activision owns the rights, who knows if this game will ever see the light of day again. Coming in at number three. I have to give to Street Fighter 3 Double Impact. A game that is superb and great. And the fact you got two games in it is awesome. You had Street Fighter 3, Second Impact, like Giant Attack. Also, you had Street Fighter 3, New Generation, which is my personal favorite of the th three Street Fighter 3 games. New Generation will always remain my favorite. One, it was the first Street Fighter 3 game I ever would play. I do have a... For certain stuff, I also have a fondness for Second Impact. Mostly for I love the music in Second Impact. I think it's some of the best of the games. But it's just something I like about the first outing with Dude Generation. But overall, I do think Double Impact deserves way more love than it gets, in all honesty. I think it's a whole... Also, Second Impact play better than third strike on the dreamcast as well plus this japanese cover art i mean is just awesome looking but for me double impact deserves more love than it gets especially new generation coming in at number two you have to excuse the somewhat weird case as the original case i never had i got the game originally loose so i just got a reproduction case second place goes to cannon spike a really cool game that revolves around charlie nash which is actually really cool and the fact there's also some awesome unlockable characters you also can play as in the game cami as well which is really cool you have unlockable characters like Mega Man and others, which is one of the things that makes Cannon Spike really cool. If you like Unreal shooters or old school style shooter games, I do, and you consider yourself a hardcore Capcom fan, this is a game to check out. Just be warned, the price on Cannon Spike is absurd nowadays. And boy do I mean it's absurd. Just look on eBay. With that said, definitely if you're looking for a great shooter action game experience on the Dreamcast, you can't go wrong with Cannon Spike. For me at number one, I am glad to see in the future Fine Collection 2, Project Justice, also known as Rival Schools 2. In my opinion, Project Justice is one of the most underrated horror or most underrated 3D fighters ever released. One, the artwork on the Japanese version is just gorgeous. And the combos and all the hyper special moves and stuff you do in the game is so bizarre. Especially the one guy, like though, specifically swimmer character because he swims in midair. And it's just ridiculous how nutty this game is. The fact that it's up to like 
also you have stuff in it, up to four players is really cool as well i just always like the weird bizarreness of rival schools and project justice i am glad to see that soon project justice will begin a re-release in capcom fine collection 2 more people need to try this game as for me, I consider this one of the most underrated fine games of all time. And there is no debate about that. Especially also the quality, the bizarreness. Uh, Project Justice has so many things that really helps itself stand out from many other games of the time period. As well as on the Sega Dreamcast. And the Sega Dreamcast was a console designed with a lot of love for fine games and specifically for Capcom. With that said, that is my list. Anyways, in my opinion, five of the most criminally underrated games on the Dreamcast. Leave a comment below and tell me your thoughts. Also, hopefully you enjoyed the music in the background from Marvel vs. Capcom 2. New Age of Heroes. See y'all again soon enough.